Hey guys, this is PMR Bones 88. And it's November and it's still it's still the fall. Halloween's over. So that means my Batmanathon begins. So I'll be just um only ranking up are the Batman films. Just only the Tim Burton's, the Joel Schumacher's, and the Christopher Nolan ones too. So no anime films and not even the crossovers like Batman v Superman. This is just only the live action Batman solo films. So let's begin. Number 8 Batman and Robin. Joe Schumacher did return to direct this film. And even so, this was the worst Batman movie I ever saw. But before that, I was a kid, I thought, hey, Batman and Robin's gonna be great, it's gonna be awesome. Plus, I begged my parents that I wanted to go see this movie in theaters, and I'm glad they didn't took me to see it, because when I saw it on VHS, and even when I grew up, and I kept thinking to myself, what the hell was I watching? Including the actors and actress selection, that was kind of bad for them. But even so, Chris O'Donnell did return to play as Robin. And Arnold Schwarzenegger playing as Mr. Freeze, I cannot picture him as Mr. Freeze. And with the dialogue, they were so campy and corny. Even the selected, the Gotham City became so neon. The anime series, which that was a bad move for them. So this was like a remake of Adam West's 1966 Batman movie. That's how I felt like they was watching. Besides the bat nipples, which they are pretty disturbing, I wish they wouldn't have got rid of those. But the introduction of Batman and Robin suiting up, including how they had to show is their asses. It's, oh, oh god, no, no, oh god, Ash, help me, help me. Oh, I'm blind, I'm blind. Why the ass? Alicia Silverstone playing as Barbara slash Batgirl. I thought for sure they're gonna go for you know being Commissioner Gordon's starter, but it turns out to be Alfred's niece. So if they're related, what makes Bruce Wayne and Barbara as cousins? The storyline was so terrible. Actors and actresses, like I said, were were terrible. And even the settings, it was totally different. Batman and Robin was com a complete mess dog shit. But honestly, I just only watch it only once in a blue moon or when I'm in a bad mood. So if you want to see a worse Batman movie, Batman and Robin is the one. Number 7, Batman the Movie. Now this was the, the actual campy 1966 movie. He even stars Adam West to play none other than the Cape Crusader, Batman. And along with his trusty sidekick, the boy wonder Robin. So the dynamic duo face off the rogue galleries, the Joker, Penguin, the Riddler, and Catwoman. So they go out fighting crime, and they go is the wham, bam, pow, zoom, zap! Just like in the comics. Sure, it might have uh, bombed the box office, but hey, this was only a Batman movie that we just love to enjoy. But for our generations, it's most of the time we want to see is Batman's darker roots. Number 6, Batman Forever. Joel Schumacher directed this film, and Tim Burton didn't want to do any more Batman movies. And the new stars of it were Val Kilmer, Jim Carrey, Tommy Lee Jones, Chris O'Donnell, and Nicole Kidman. Batman Forever was an okay movie, even though it was starting to get comic goal movie. There were some dark moments and some darker scenes that we see of Batman. Val Kilmer, he played a good job of playing as Batman, but even so with this um, comic goal dialogue starting to uh, get all corny and campy, and also with uh, Gotham City starting to almost become the anime series, just a little bit, but it did have some of Tim Burton's roots, just a little bit of uh, darker scenes moments. But despite of the villains, like Tommy Lee Jones playing as Two-Face, he was becoming a wacky, maniac villain and Jim Carrey playing as the Riddler. I mean sure he almost had the direction of playing as the Riddler but the problem was that he always acts like every other his uh, comedy movies. So he is a combination of between uh, the in the movie The Mask and Ace Ventura. 
it's a fair movie, a fair sequel just to watch and enjoy. And even with the music that they had, even some music videos such as YouTube, Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me and Kill Me, and Kiss from the Rose by Seal. I do have the music, I uh, downloaded them on iTunes. Batman Forever is an okay movie, but it's not better than the other Batman films that I've seen. Number 5, The Dark Knight Rises. This was the third and finale of the Dark Knight trilogy. And for some critics, they said that the Dark Knight Rises was sort of a backlash, drag down movie. But to me, it wasn't really a backlash. But I do have to agree, it was kind of dragging it down. Just the first story was kind of dragging it down. It was like slowing it down and not too much action that was happening. But for the second and third part of the story, what brought it back up was the action. And a lot of fans wanted to see Bane breaking Batman, and which eventually he did, just like in the comics. And Chris and Bell returned to play as Batman, I think he did a good job. But fortunately with his voices, start, I think he was starting to lose, lose his Batman voice, that we could barely understand a word he is saying. And he tries to change it just a little bit, but most of the time all we could hear is just gurgling voice. I think it was better off, you know, just trying to make it soft and calmly, but he does try to make it more angry and serious. <laughs> it sounds like he has a list problem. And as for Tom Hardy playing as Bane, I think he did a good job and facing off Batman, including the fight between the cops and the Gotham prisoners, and especially Batman versus Bane. I think that was a pretty epic fight. It was like an all-out war, hand-to-hand -hand combat. And once again, Batman just saved Gotham City for a total destruction. Number four, Batman Begins. After from the huge big bomb failure of Joel Schumacher's Batman and Robin, it was now Christopher Nolan's turn to direct this new Batman film and bring Batman back to his darker roots and how Bruce Wayne became the Dark Knight hero. The story was actually interesting and it kept it true to the comics. It's really a good film and how it tells the story and, and with the actors and actresses, superb job, the setting was great, even Gotham City was even really realistic and having Batman facing off the villains such as Rachel Ghoul and Scarecrow in which I thought at first Scarecrow was going to be the main villain that Batman has to face off but he felt kind of a, a side villain, just like a sidekick to Rachel Ghoul. And Christian Bale playing as both Bruce Wayne and Batman, he did a superb job too. I think all the actors and actresses did a great job of playing their roles and they were magnificent. This is when you want to see a true Batman and how he became the Dark Knight and displays his origin. Where are you? Here. <laughs> Number three, Batman Returns. Tim Burton did came back to direct this film, and Michael Keaton once again sued up to play as another than the Dark Knight himself, Batman. There has been mixture reviews about this film. It did felt like it was a Tim Burton film, which that didn't bother me. It didn't. I didn't really complain too much. But such as with Batman killing everyone, I mean, that's not how Batman does. He doesn't really kill anyone. He usually just spare their lives or leaves them hanging and let the cops deal with them, like arrest them and put them to jail. But for Batman Returns, it was a lot darker. It was a bit gory and, and sort of gothic. I mean, this is how sort of the dark movies are that for Tim Burton, what he does directs his either dark or weird films. And Batman Returns is actually the most scariest movie I ever saw when I was a kid. And now that Batman is facing off two villains, Penguin and Catwoman, that were played by both Danny DeVito and Michelle Pfeiffer, Christopher Walken playing as Matt Shrek, he wasn't really part of the DC comic characters or even the Batman characters, but except just for the film, that was it. Batman Returns is, is actually a, a good sequel, and since it took place on Christmas, it could be both a superhero movie or a Christmas movie. I'd rather watch it both, either if it's Christmas time or it's just another superhero Batman movie. Number 2. Batman First 1989 Batman movie and Tim Burton directed this film. This first film, Batman, kind of changed my life. This is what I like about Batman because he's so dark, he's so such a mystery, and he doesn't have too much dialogue. He has a couple dialogue, especially where he introduced himself. I'm Batman. 
seeing Michael Keaton playing as the Dark Knight hero really changed my life. He just went from being a comedy actor to a serious superhero actor. But when he plays as Bruce Wayne, he's too calm, he's too comical at times. But once he puts on the cape and cowl, he is totally different. He is one serious Dark Knight superhero. And especially for uh, Jack Nicholson when he plays as the Joker. He was so comical, but he's most of the time crazy and also a gangster. But for this story of Batman, it was kind of different. And it did have, and it did explain his origin just a little bit. But for seeing as um, Jack Napier, aka the Joker, that he was the one that killed Bruce's parents, kind of the bad move, and that was the wrong idea that Tim Burton should have done. But he didn't really read the comic books. I think Tim Burton only was just interested, was just directing this Batman film to make it darker and more serious and a little scary. It was my went from being my first favorite to be my second favorite. And I'm gonna tell you my number one Batman movie. But besides that, Batman is still my favorite genre movie. And number one, The Dark Knight. This was the actual and best Dark Knight movie ever, including with Heath Ledger playing as the Joker. He did his performance magnificent. I was so mind blown and I saw this movie in theater like three times. That's why it was so good and it blew up to the box office over about two thousand million dollars maybe perhaps more it could be less i could be wrong but dark knight was the best movie everyone loved it and seeing chris and bale returning to play as the dark knight once again and he upgraded to a new batman suit that was even terrific as well even the storyline was good and especially the settings and seeing the places that they've shot at that was really perfect, really crispy, and very high definition. That I would say, high definition. The so Dark Knight, such a great movie. It was the best movie in back in 2008. It actually beats Iron Man and the Incredible Hulk all together. And even with the best quotes that Heath Ledger playing as the Jokers were, Why so serious? And, Let's put a smile on that face. It blew everybody's mind especially the scars on his face. I was really impressed. I wanted to like get that makeup and become it as Heath Ledger the Joker. But most likely I always loved were Mark Hamill's Joker and Jack Nicholson's. Jared Leto's Joker was okay, but his laughter was eh, not good. I wish he could have done it better, but Heath Ledger's <laughs> Joker's laugh was on tops. <laughs> So there you have it folks, those were my Batman rank ups. Do you agree with my ranks or are your, rank, are your ranks totally different than mine? Do you have it in a different order? Let me know in the comments down below and don't worry folks, it will be a Batman-a-thon review all month of November. And this is PMRBones88 signing off and saying is, PEACE!